Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wateri from Hold to Run. Today, we're gonna quickly recap how to use Google Billing into your app for in-app purchases. So this is my class Google Billing, which holds all the uh, Google in-app purchase billing related functions and callbacks and it's connected into two activities and one of the activities just checks for existing purchases and the other activity setting activity is the place where you can actually purchase this product and the product is going to be pro version to get rid of ads in this instance so this is going to be two stage uh, uh, video. First, we read through, recap what is happening in here. And when that is done, you're gonna see my process of coding this from using existing elements and uh, I'm gonna refactor it for this app. So let's start. So let's start. We have created our custom class which is called Google Billing. It, it needs context to get access into our data store, which is for Prev's data store class in here. We need to save persistent data when we get response of a product is being purchased and we can save it. And uh, we can also read it from here. So that's for persistent data, even if we wouldn't have any internet. So it's going to be locally, the purchase status is going to be locally saved also. So this class extends the uh, the Google billing purchases updated listener for the call packs. So Google can inform us a whole bunch of uh, override functions as a response, how the purchase proceeded if it's owned or not or cancelled or whatever so as a structure i use coin in the application class and in here when i init initialize the coin it, my app module holds this google billing class and i can pass in context and my toast class for additional functions that way this is not going to be activity constant context instead it is application context like so and in here you can see in important statuses the purchase will have either a request to buy pro mode or it is pending it means that the the purchase has been sent for handling but it's still pending at google's end because it's slow for any reason so it's going to be confirmed with a delay if it's not instantly confirmed and then it is already activated. So these states I use in my view model, but I use them through this billing classes mutable state live data pro mode. So I can ask this in my activities where I visually display the status for the user, for instance, where the user purchases it. So that way, one class can feed many activities view model for uh, uh, UI elements. Okay, and um, toast responses to let the user know what is happening. And of course, through the context, we can reach our data store. The data store I initialized within my application class as an in singleton. So the whole class can now access this one as a data store. And uh, then the most important thing, we have to initialize billing line. It's going to be with late init var because now we will create it. That's the first thing. So how do we create it and in where? We have to call this setup billing client. So we're calling it in the on create of our main activity. So this is where the user lands and 
this activity is first activity that the user interacts with the app. So this is a great place to call setup billing client. As our billing client was coin in initialized by coin, we can get it by inject. And uh, it's important that in our coin app modules, the billing client is used as a singleton, not factory, but as a singleton. Then whenever this sources of information gets updated, it's always gonna feed in the same info instantaneously into all activities. And uh, they're not following two instances of this billing client. Okay, so let's go back to our main activity and let's set up this billing client. So when the app starts, we use our billing, billing class, which was injected by going in here and we call set up billing client and uh, we get the instance of our billing client through this builder, billing client, new builder, and we set listener into this class. Okay. And we call start connection. And as an object, we implement the billing client state listener. So Google can now give us callbacks as override functions, how if it's set up correctly or not. So when it the response code is OK. We can finish our billing setup as a true. It was success. Otherwise, we just call false. Or if its service is disconnected, we can retry the connection. So here probably some kind of a retry maximum accounts would be OK. So you need to think about it. I'm not thinking about it, obviously. So then with true, we call our function and if the result was OK, it might, might as well be false. But with OK, we can start querying our uh, existing purchases. In any other case, we're just going to confirm into our live data of pro mode that, hey, it's still in the status of buy pro mode. You don't own it. It's not pending or anything else. OK, so we continue the chain of events by calling query purchases async. Here we do it in a code in scope. So everything is happening in the background and uh, it's going to be continuing while Google gives us the callbacks. So in here we use our billing client and query purchases async. And with these params, we build it and we will get billing result and purchase list. And uh, if our purchases list is not empty, we can start iterating through it with for loop. It means we have some purchases. OK, then we have to monitor if the purchase product contains my product ID. So my product ID is something you see in here. I have it in my uh, uh, object class of billing ID, actual my product ID. That is something you have to set up into your Google Play console while you activate uh, in-app purchases product and give it a price. So that's a unique ID for your app product. So th this is mine. So it contains my product ID. OK, and uh, its purchase state is purchased. It means it is already owned. Then we can continue into our query purchases result in here by giving it the state and uh, giving it the purchase in here. So that's going to be already owned product. It might as well be in unspecified state or in pending state. And uh, all those we're going to fast forward into our next function. Else, if it is empty, well, there's no product available at all that I assume in here. So I'm just going to pass in null and uh, minus 1000 as a result. That is something that just doesn't exist in the uh, integer space of 
Google status, statuses, hopefully, so it doesn't hit anything what I'm about to uh, reference in here. So we get a response of our purchases history. So when purchase state, we're gonna see what is the state of it. Purchased, it's already on. We have to acknowledge purchase products within three days. I believe that's the rule. So in here, we're gonna acknowledge this purchase if it's purchased already. So whenever the purchase is purchased and uh, it's not yet acknowledged, we will acknowledge it in here immediately while we check the, the refresh the purchase data. So that's going to confirm that the user, we accept the user's purchase and he owns it now within three days. Otherwise, the product will get refund for the uh, user. So, okay. If it's in unspecified state, sorry, we have to continue still in the purchase. If it's purchased, we need to save it into our persistent data. So you can use shared preferences or anything, but I'm using my press data store and uh, we can now save it as a true in here. So this is something that is locally always available to me, whether or not there's internet. So I can check later on in my functions if the user owns it or not. But this is where I save it, okay? In a true state in that situation. In any other state, what it was unsure, unspecified state, we say false, it's pending, we say false. Uh, any other weird situation as an else function, we also save as a false. And at the same time, we're gonna update our view, let's say, mutable live state data of pro mode into the status of whether activated or not or you still need to buy it or it's bought but it's pending and this is something we can now use into ui elements as a automatically out updated date view model date okay now we just got a response of existing purchase history so what is next we use this in the main activity. Remember that this wasn't used uh, uh, yet in any other place. Sorry, it is also in the settings activity. Activity, But okay, let's continue. So what do we do now? We all know the history. So of course, let's go forward in here. We acknowledged we want to buy the product. Okay, before we go in here, let's go and see what else are we doing with the billing client in our main activity. So we should see a couple references to this instance of billing client. So that is our Google billing, which holds all the billing functions. In here, we set it up in the on create. So that's the first activity. So we set it up. Then in the on start pretty much this gets always called when the app is brought from the background also so we want to always refresh the purchase history good what else do we do in the main activity oh yeah we have to end the connection in here so we have to call billing billing client end connection so this means as this is the main activity the app gets destroyed, we have to uh, get rid of this instance of our billing client and all the callbacks, we have to call end connection. Good. So now we can go back into our Google billing class and see how do we actually buy something? Where do we call this? So I told you that uh, the setting class, settings class, is actually the place where the user can buy this product. So in my settings, there's going to be a pro buy pro mode button. So in there, this Lambda function will call our billing client. And it was instantiated as a singleton in 
in the coin so I get it through uh, coins inject so it's gonna pass me the same existing instance of this building class as it was already instantiated by the main activity so we will get the same callbacks so in here in the settings activity which actually uh, presents visual objects of the status of that building state we will now use that mutable state of pro mode status which was automatically updated by these when the google building callback tells me if it's owned or pending or bought so we keep on changing status of this and then the settings activities set content will update also the view model for the user so we can change icons and texts accordingly like so in here okay good and now what happens when the user presses start by so he presses the button then we will check if the billing client in here already exists so the first thing we did was to call set up billing client so this should exist then we go back to the query product details sorry we start the query product details to start the buying process so if it doesn't yet exist it's not ready we're just going to inform the user that hey billing client not ready as a toast and uh, ensure to still show status of the buy pro mode in the uh, ui elements but okay query product details so this gets called we use our billing client and we get start the query product details async okay and we get the billing result and pro details list if the uh, response code is okay we can now start going through the pro details list and actually check if it contains our product id that's the id that we're about to try to buy okay in case it exists we can then call our query product details result with true state so it exists else we're just gonna say false and pass in null so we know that we don't continue any further in here we get the confirmation that hey show billing window okay and the product details is not, is not null we can show the billing window you're gonna see this purchase process what in the next stage of the video where i actually also go through the uh, purchase process so we get the response from billing client the feature is support feature is supported and response is okay then we can call display billing window else we're just gonna tell the user that hey something went wrong or this is not supported okay with the display billing window you get additional floating window which guides you to either purchase this product with a certain price or cancel so if you confirm the purchase it's gonna then start all the way from up here by the google is google is gonna tell us now that hey user purchased the product and we get a response that the user purchased the product and then we can pretty much so when the user confirms the purchase or cancels the purchase within the billing window google starts calling this callback from the over override on purchases updated and uh, it's either going to be okay or there's going to be plenty of additional results answers if it's not on or it cancelled or something else so we need to handle these accordingly th through the uh, override function of on purchases updated so this is my function to handle the uh, response codes so it's going to give a purchase and a status 
and uh, let's see if the purchase is okay so the user actually confirmed the purchase we will get a response code of okay and then we check the purchase state and if the purchase state is purchased we can inform as a toast for the user that hey you purchased purchase was success and then we can also again initially acknowledge this purchase like so as we also did in the uh, while we checked the existing uh, purchases and uh, then let's go back in here we're gonna save also in here because that's the that's the first time we get feedback if the user owns it we're, we need to save a true state into our local persistent data that's something that i save into my preferences shared preferences and uh, then we update also the uh, live data of pro mode into pro mode activated the answer might also be that the user purchased but it's pending so it's not yet confirmed by google so in this status it might still get cancelled so i'm just gonna save false it's not yet owned and the pending status into the pro mode live data in here okay if there's anything else that tells me that it's not on i'm just gonna inform in the cancel that hey you cancelled i don't do anything else if it's already owned while the user tries to rebuy it we don't actually do anything there's going to be an error message directly by the uh, billing client that hey you already own it but at least we can confirm the save into true state and uh, inform the user that hey you already own it and uh, reconfirm the live data for the ui that hey it's already activated it then not owned we definitely say save the uh, local persistent data false and we recommend to buy it and we bring up a toast that product not owned the billing client might not be ready so we just tell that hey it's not ready and live data again into buy pro mode and uh, if service is not available at all we just inform as a toast billing client service not available item not available might mean that my the item is not the product is not listed anymore so let's inform item not available and then there might be service timeout so we just tell that hey billing client timeout we don't do anything else and this is just my custom ending for any random situation so might as well happen someday so if the uh, the user did not own the pro mode yet i'm just gonna say purchase failed as a toast else i'm just gonna say that hey you own it already anyways because he definitely owns it that's what my local data is saying okay now we have checked how you can purchase uh, uh check the uh, purchase history and start buying process so let's see what else did we do in this uh, activity where you are trying to buy the product. So what are we doing with this billing client? So we updated the view model for this. Now we can change the texts to tell that if you need to buy it or not and change the icons of the buy pro mode button. Okay. Then we call this function start buy process then in the on start identically as within the main activity we always in the on start we ask the updated purchase history so this way we get results what is already owned okay and we don't do anything else so a note here i don't in the on destroy i don't do and connection for the billing client only in the main activity otherwise this destroys the billing client unnecessarily and another point is that in the on create i don't create 
a, a another instance of this billing client as in here. We only call the end connection in here and uh, in the on create of the main activity. Let's try to get to the on create. This is the only place where I call setup billing client like so. That way we only have one instance of billing line with one set of callback listeners in here. So we don't do things twice. Good. Okay, guys. Now we can jump into the another part. How did I code this? It's going to be a mess. So, but bear with me. Okay. Let's follow what we need to implement the Google billing. Here you can see some dependencies for the billing class. So you need the client and the client KTX. We're using these, the latest version for 5.0.0. That's also something I'm using in my other apps. It's not deprecated. And by the way, I'm this is already coded and uh, I'm commenting this on top of the video. So let's see how I did. Something is going to take a little while. So now, yeah, we need the uh, Google billing class. This is something that is proven in, in my daily operations. So I Definitely want to copy paste that into uh, this project. And then we need to uh, reformat that code. I want to use a singleton at the end of the day. I want to use a single class that can serve many activities with the same billing client. We, of course, will need a custom product ID. I just put in something that is different in here. Let's import all the dependencies that we need and get rid of those unimportant, not working dependency imports. So yeah, it seems I, this guy coding background, has everything set up. So let's close up some of the unnecessary tools. And here comes a point that I'm making decisions how to structure this class. I mean, at the end of the day, I decided to go with coin to get all the dependency injects. So the coin is being initialized within the application class. In my case, called server dog. It's going to be a class that is going to exist automatically called within the manifest. So in here we can define our coin module, app module, and let's put that Google billing class as a singleton. So that's why when I inject in within the activities, the coin ensures its activity will get the same instance of it. So that that's why all the, uh, the Google callbacks are going to trigger all activities through the one app. So yeah. Okay, then we need to uh, set up the billing client. So in the main activity, we call set up billing client. And what's that? This is going to create us the instance of the billing client within our billing client class. So you can see the uh, billing client. And uh, yeah, let's put it as the first to do object within the on create. It, because it's going to take a little while before it's set up. So yeah, in here, we can, we now get the instance of the billing client and then we need to handle the response if it's success or not to continue the operations with the billing client. So yeah, let's list this as a to do live data, the live data, what I mean with it, we're going to use it to update the view models and uh, there. Now we can copy paste that nicely from existing project in here. And uh, then we can handle our 
result if it's success or not. So we can just pretty much delete those Google Billing Manager references because it's extra class which is not needed anymore. It seems I'm a bit lost here. Cannot figure out what to do. Yeah, you can also delete the view model. We need to uh, add some coroutine threading scopes. I think that's the dispatcher's IO, yeah. Then you can just delete that one, correct. Because we already have this function in here within the same class. No extra abstractions in here. And uh, then we need to uh, add a to-do for handling the purchasing history because this is gonna get us what we own or what we do not own. Yep, you have that promote value already in there. You can just delete the view model. I believe we're gonna add that as a mutable state object within this class. Exactly. Now, if we use that as a mutable state object in here, then all activities can actually follow the state of it within their view models. So those are my standard uh, states of the purchased project, so nicely copy paste in here within this Google billing class, not there. Just remove all of them down below. This is the pain of creative process, do everything twice or three times before you're happy with it. So after all, I came to my senses, I finally transfer those within the class and uh, make them normal private vowels. So now we can use them as the states of the billing client to update our mutable state of promote value. So that should be now correct. Now let's update the billing setup finished result. So there's no view model within this class, but it does have the mutable state live values of promo. So as a default, we can just tell by promo like that. Nice. And then we can continue refactoring this class so that we can finally, at the end of the day, use this within the activity. So what do we need to do next? Yeah, that's that's the uh, the live data. Once this gets updated, we can reference this within the activities for the view models, all of them. Okay, now we can purchase the uh, query, the purchase history, and there's another to do. Now we will finish this to do. So to get the history, what the user has purchased, we have to call this query purchases async result and handle these callback responses from Google. So this is important to refresh as many times as necessary. So normally within the on resume or within the uh, on start lifecycle callbacks of the activity. <clears throat> so I recall I used to do this within the on resume, but while I was finished with this revision of implementing my Google billing, I ended up using it within the on start every time. So there's a lot of uh, dependencies we have to uh, save now if the user is already really owning it 
when it's purchased. If it's in unspecified state, we want to save that into a, a persisting data. We use Prev's data store and we're also going to update those live data values for view models for the pro mode. So you can see purchased, unspecified, pending, and then we handle any other uh, uh, unvalid situation with else. So pretty much only in the purchase state we want to save it in the persisting data of press data store as a true and we tell the user in the view model that pro mode has been activated like so so it takes a little while for me to uh, fix these I don't have yet in my code within the press data store the save and get functions so first we need to uh, make it in here create pro mode specific unique key value that we can save into and get from the bot status that looks like a nice copy paste yep we can reformat that for the pro mode okay let's see save pro mode and we're gonna save boolean value in here we need to modify this a bit to be more readable and of course we need to uh, use the correct key so let's change those logging values to make it more logical for this function and then the correct promote key and then that variable of pro mode okay now we can save true or false then of course we want to get this from our persisting data of press data store so let's modify this function get pro mode value so we can log it if we need to in the errors and correct key in here get it from the pro mode key nice so now we are saving it in here Good. oops we are missing the data store in this so we have to uh, reformat this code a bit this will need context otherwise this class doesn't get its get its hands on the data store so i ended up initializing our press data store within the application class which is the first thing the app creates through the manifest and now we can get our hands on that data store by passing in context into our billing class and then we can initialize that one in here so you're gonna see it in a little while I just already created a new instance of the data store so now we have uh, our purchase history async call in here which can save the purchase status and also update our live data for the uh, pro mode value if the purchase exists there you can see also context dot data store we can get our hands on through that in here and Google billing was initialized in coin and we can then pass in that context up there within this class which should be application context not activity context anymore so that's just an extra class a function that I'm writing here if for any reason it would be practical to uh, ask boolean value if promote is already purchased just to um, I recall I didn't need this, but uh, somebody might use see, see this as a, a practical function. Then we want to uh, we need to start thinking how do we actually buy purchase something. So we're gonna do it through the query product details. So with this, we need to continue to uh, operate prepare the start by process 
So if the uh, billing client is ready, we can start query product details. And uh, this is the way which starts the purchasing process. And uh, if we find the product from Google's lists and uh, it's working correctly, the user will at the end of the day see the purchasing window and then he can decide if he cancels or purchases the, uh, the product. So I'm just gonna be doing marking my to do's. There are some toasts, just uh, halfway informations for the users. And now we get the uh, another live data update. But let's see how we did this. Okay, it seems I'm again a bit lost in here. Yep. If we don't know what is happening, then always go back to the buy pro mode status. So now the user presses the start buy process and we proceed to query product details. And with our billing client, we get a response from Google. And if we find our product within, we can then start the purchase details result within our query product details result result, which will actually then open the uh, purchasing window for the user within the uh, mobile view. So this is going to be another to do to implement reformat our code for that. So from our existing project, we can get a nice frame for the query product details and we're going to paste this proven piece of code in here. And while I was doing this, I thought that we have for the display billing window that context is enough, but actually it requires an activity in which it will show that. So we have to uh, reformat our code a bit. It's not context that it actually needs, but an activity. So, so I'm, I'm building a mess for a little while. So it took me a couple tries to uh, reformat this to be suitable, but finally I figured it out. So we're passing in a context, which is something we would probably use if I would have uh, uh, used the toast with the context in here, but there it has to be an activity, nothing else is accepted. So let's redo this part. You're not going to find it from the context. Yep, that's correct. Activity. So next piece of puzzle is to figure out how, where to pass in the activity here, all the way from there, where the user, user actually interacts with this piece of code from the activity class, like so. So let's pass in the activity and we can trickle it down into our sub functions. there and finally into our query product details we can reach the activity I don't know what I'm doing with the mouse but it's doing a lot of movements in here Good. Good. And that should do the job. Yeah, let's mark those toast as a to do. Later in the later phase, I also implemented an actual 
my toast class which already holds the, uh, the reference to context so it's not gonna be needing to trickle down the context through the sub functions to another anymore and then we reached the display building window okay so this piece seems to be quite okay for us to uh, take another step in our code okay so one last lifecycle call we need to implement is end building client so in the on destroy we in, within the activities on destroy we reach the billing instance of our billing client class and it should have the billing client yes it exists already so by using the billing client dot end connection it's built in function and we can call it while the app gets activity main activity gets destroyed so as this is single instance use this on destroy function and connection only within your main application main activity class so correct then we want to ensure that our other lifecycle callbacks query purchases history such as in here also gets implemented that should already be if i recall i did implement it already within my activity main activities on start let's see okay in on start oops we don't have it yet in here that's the correct place where it belongs did i actually put it in it in the on resume well better add it in here that's a good place to uh, refresh your purchase history yep and another beautiful copy paste of approving code does the job yep my billing class if it's ready we can then call the billing dot query purchases async yes and a little modification here billing class there now we have a refreshed purchases every time the app starts and continues that's within coverting so specifically have to define this activity yes so now we get re get our purchases refreshed nice okay we're nearly done but there's one big sport to be done to handle the purchasing callbacks from the actual purchase so this is one of the most complicated state handling so we're gonna copy paste all these response states from another project and uh, modify this to be suitable for this app and this uh, refactoring of a code so let's to do mark to do for all those toasts and uh, we can yeah those additional class references can be deleted so when the purchase is success google response it's success we can then save the pro mode as a true state into our persistent data update the uh, pro mode view model like data and uh, again put to do's those which are not so important at this point else if it's pending we can update it pending state for our live data promote value there's user cancelled we're just gonna info that hey you cancel we don't change any states at that point if the item is already owned yeah we save it save the persistent data true again and then if item is not owned we can react by saving false and again updating live data billing unavailable yep you can see all those statuses in here uh, a lot of toasts and any other error message we're just gonna handle them as as a toast messages there 
finally now it's time to actually interact with this start by process so we have to define an activity and a button where the user can call this function so you can do this anywhere i'm gonna do this in my settings activity to uh, make a purchase pro button in in there so this you're seeing jetpack compose graphics coding so implementing one single button and all the uh, to do's related to it took me painfully long so i believe you know how to create a button so i'm gonna fast forward this one Here is a quick clip within the uh, our activity where we intend to buy. We also want to update the view model of this activity by the billing client's mutable live data. What is the actual promo status bought, pending or cancelled? So that way we can show the, uh, the text and the icons of the uh, buy pro button. To the user with certain icons and uh, with certain texts so he gets a visual feedback okay let's continue And after all that hard work, we had a, have a single button and it doesn't do anything. So it's not connected to the uh, start by process function. So that's next. And in the settings, compose main activity scaffold. We need to now pass in the billing clients start by process function as a lambda function so we need to trickle that function all the way down into our compose class where the uh, the buy pro button resides as a ui element now we are connecting the billing client start by process function into this activity and we're just gonna trickle it down into our ui button so there are lots of uh, lambda on click functions for the buy pro to be done so let's fast forward and in here this is the button that you saw me clicking we're just gonna pass in the lambda function by pro click and replace our to do with that function now it works and of course before we actually try to purchase anything we have to ensure that our app exists in minimum as a closed beta app so you have to upload that into your play console i'm using my alpha billing client closed channel for that one it has to have the uh, the billing permissions in the manifest then you need to have to set up your pricing for in-app purchases and lastly to get test responses you have to have your license testers as emails listed in here and uh, you can just select that google response normally there then the uh, manifest ensure you have the billing lending billing permissions and now we can start testing the uh, use cases how the billing client should respond if everything is working so fingers crossed we're seeing some responses on our lifecycle calls we are tr trying to purchase and we agree and then we can select a test cancel so it worked correctly it cancelled then we are testing another function yeah. 
it's gonna be approved with a delay so this is fine good use case test to get our pending status in between before it accepts so there's gonna be a this is delayed credit card so you see the status change from by pro to pro version pending and uh, it's gonna take a couple of minutes before the uh, the Google billing client approves this purchase and then we should get updated state automatically into you have successfully bought the pro so let's go fast forward and finally we just we should see there now pro version activated so Google confirmed the process with a little delay from pending to pro version activated so that's how I am displaying it in here for the user nice and as a thank you from the purchase when the app is uh, restarted I'm just gonna in minimum hide the ads from the user so that's a premium small premium for the user so he doesn't need to deal with the ads anymore and then we can double check that when the user already owns it we shouldn't try to do double purchase yeah we're just noting error you have already you already own this product nice and uh, there it is guys so if you like what i do you can go into holdtorun.com and in here you can see short intros of the applications and videos and uh, you can see more code recapping videos as a playlist in my page or go directly into my youtube channel you can find hold to run from youtube and you can also test my applications directly within google play okay see you later